Hello everyone, welcome to another Victoria 2 video. And in today's video, I'm playing as the Timur Tash Empire in the new HPM Divergences of Darkness update, specifically the, the Captain Loco branch of the of the mod. So I wanted to see like have they made the Persia region more interesting than it was before? Because before it was pretty much just vanilla regions and provinces too. And this rework completely fixed everything. It basically made Persia a lot more realistic. The terrain is a lot more realistic. I love that. Because of that, I, I definitely needed to give the Timur Tash Empire a try. I wanted to see what the newest what was like what was the newest thing that this branch of Divergences of Darkness had to offer. And this was the best way to do it. Because it was it was their newest content, and in the lore of the mod, Timber the Timbertash Empire is actually a shadow of its former self. It essentially collapsed, and and now it's basically just its core regions. When you're playing as the Timbertash, your objective is to basically reconquer all of your former regions, and I th the whole gameplay of your nation for the first like 30 years of the game is to try to reconquer these these regions, and that's that's the main goal. Now there's actual things that matter. Um, when you're conquering, uh, and when you take over land, and when you lose land, etc., all that stuff. So, when you start out in 1836 as a Timurtash Empire, is you have to kind of find, you know, a goal of uh, what what you need to do. Because the first four years of the game, you can't really do much reunification because you don't have access to the reunification CB. Um, until 1840. This goes the same with China, I'm pretty sure, which has like a similar kind of CB where you can't use it until 1840. And those four years gives you time to kind of build up your army. Get ready for the conquest. I bet most players probably don't want to wait that long though. And that was also me because I did not want to wait long. I pretty much immediately just fought on Afghanistan and took as much as I could because you need to take advantage of that nice divergences infamy reduction because that is really good, but it only lasts usually 10 years. So you got to really take advantage of it. So you use this, you use these first four years, not to just, not only to just build up your army and like, you know, fix your finances and organize everything but also to just really take advantage of your weaker neighbors. But after you, after you do all that stuff, your next objective is obviously reconquering a bunch of Persian land. The Timurtash Empire is unique in that in this new update, they can't actually form Persia like the other countries are. Because technically, you're like the, you're the original state. You're the state that fell apart and now you're trying to reconquer your lost lands. They made it so like once you do reconquer a lot of these regions, you will get cores on them and accept the pops and etc so you're essentially still playing persia and forming persia it's just in a little bit of a different way uh so the timurtash obviously um you have a few different options uh, in 1840 to who to go for you could either go for the kaya kira base wherever uh tyran is i i'm butch i'm gonna butcher all these things by the way i'm so sorry if you're from uh iran or anywhere in the region <laughs> the guys to your left and then the people down below you the whatever the skabizi whatever empire or whatever whatever it's called and i went for the the guys south of me because those people have access to a coastline and that is something i really wanted because i didn't have that i declared war on them and you know i thought it was gonna be easy but then it turns out scandinavia speared them like two years into the game or something so um that caught me off guard and it's mostly because um i forgot that in the newer updates uh scandinavia was given that little island off the coast of iran so now they have like even more of a priority sphere in these countries than they normally would scandinavia joined this the skabizi empire or whatever it made it a lot harder but then i realized that my army tech wasn't actually that much worse and i was able to actually you know pull off a win so i didn't actually have to like immediately capitulate like i normally would in like any normal game i was actually able to fight back and i was able to actually get one state from them i couldn't take the state i wanted to i had to i had to go for a really you know small state but it got me access to the coast and that was enough for me to be happy uh, but after that though i kind of realized like uh persia is going to be a pain in the ass to reunify so i just i just, then i just went for the other guy and eating them I, I pretty much just destroyed them pretty easily it wasn't too much of a hassle and because of that i got an event that gave me legitimacy and this is the one of the newer things that they added for the timur tash empire is that you get legitimacy points added to your country that's an invisible modifier you can't see it but the game the game sees it and you gain plus one legitimacy every time you conquer a major persian city tyran being one of them but guess what most of the ones that i really needed were from the skabizi empire so i couldn't really do much about any of that stuff because if i wanted to take it i would have to fight scandinavia so it was really annoying that i couldn't take all this stuff because that meant my country was gonna erupt into a civil war which the only way to stop is to have pretty much all of the main cities and one of the things that i also should point out 
is when you're progressing through all of this stuff, you should also note that there's decisions you can take if you get certain inventions and do certain reforms. And that Civil War, it wasn't really that challenging, especially since instead of forming one breakaway state, it's like three. And pretty much after that Civil War, is mostly a breeze. I, I kind of just conquered the Shaki Khanite, took Tabriz, very easy. Um, I had to pay a little bit extra, but I really wanted to take that coal province, that really good coal province, one of the best ones in the region. And then I basically just kept eating more bits of Afghanistan here and there. And then I westernized. And when I westernized, that's when I kind of started focusing on taking over the rest of Persia. Because now, at this point, since the last time I even declared war on the Skabizi Empire, I only had like maybe like 18 units, 20 units. Now I had almost like 70. And Scandinavia was busy in a war. So what a perfect time to declare war on the little empire down there. And I was basically able to eat them in two wars. I couldn't eat them in one because of war score. So I had to eat them in two wars, but luckily truce timers from these CBs are only last like a year. So it was great. I didn't even have to waste too much time. And pretty much right after that, I basically just had most of Persia under my control. And now it was just kind of cleaning up borders because the borders kind of looked really bad. Eastern border looks really bad, but I really wanted to take India because India is just too good. At this point, you'd think I'd try to clean up the borders though, right? Like, you know, I got, yeah, I got enough land. I can clean up the borders now, make them look a little bit nicer. But then something happened called 1880 and the whole world being able to eat Africa, at least Europe being able to eat Africa. Because that event allows pretty much every other nation that's not in Europe to just pay five of me to eat any nation that has less than 50% SIP progress. Fun fact, most countries in Central Asia and in India are below 50% SIP progress by the time it's 1880. So you can imagine what I did because I had a fairly low infamy. I had like maybe like seven infamy. So, you know, I just, I just went in, I just started, I just kept going. I just, first I, first I did some core events I had to take Central Asia, but then I realized why not take the whole country instead of just taking the little snippet of the cores, but I wanted to take all of it. So I straight up just, you know, use the core events to get my way up there. And then I really started taking advantage of that, of that five infamy CV. And I, and I basically just kept going in Central Asia. And, th and then after I started conquering Central Asia, I realized I border the Mughals and I can eat the Mughals for five infamy. <laughs> So that was my next thing I did. I basically just went right for the Mughals. And after I conquered the Mughal Empire, I, I, gained, I think I gained like, I was at like 13 million. And then I went to 26 million in one war. And then my then my name placement looked really bad. <laughs> it, it, it went upside down. The border gore got so bad here that my name was upside down. That You don't see that every day. It wasn't even upright. It was literally curving as if like, you know, I was like looking at the screen upside down, which I definitely was not when I was playing the game. I don't recommend actually looking at your screen upside down down after i conquered the moogles i felt unstoppable i felt like I, no one could stop me i could just keep conquering so then i just kept conquering i just conquered bengal i conquered the moogle stand which is a i think a new tag they added tibet i got i got unlucky on my own conquest and i got got a lot of infamy which really sucked the name placement was fixed it wasn't upside down anymore i went specifically for aesthetics and at this point i already i, I already had it enough to sustain myself so you know i wanted to clean up these little itty bitty tiny baby countries that were landlocked in asia and nepal was my first target on the list and i'm going to call this an invasion of nepal the first invasion of nepal and nepal in nepal's new provinces i go siege that down very easy piece them out but then i get bored because then i'm like i have to wait another like few years so uh, what do i do when i pass the time well i i go to the pop screen you know who doesn't go to the pop screen when they're when they're bored and out of their mind you know you get to look at the little itty bitty things that, what people are doing you know people are poor people are angry you can just you can kind of just you know look at all that and i scroll down on my pop screen i'm like looking like this like oh look at the state i can state it um it once i get enough colonial points i, I scroll down and i noticed that i was like, I was like that's funny um, and then, then the game crashed and I was like, well, that's great. The game crashed. I had no idea why the game crashed. It just crashed. And I assumed it was something to do with that little state thing. So I was like, okay, well maybe it just, the game bugged out when it saw that. I've already done this like many times in the previous games where I clicked on it and nothing happened, but the game never crashed when I did that. So I didn't really know what was happening. Um, but I didn't actually save the game. So I had to go back to my autosave and I had to reinvade Nepal again. I had to reinvade them for a second time. I called this the second invasion of Nepal. Very, very nice invasion of Nepal. And then, you know, I start, you know, I kind of forget about it. Because I'm like, okay, I just, you know, just don't click on the little funky state thing. You know, just don't even go down the state thing. I'll be fine. I started wondering, are my pops Shia? Are my pops, like, Sunni? Because this is the stuff you kind of do when you're sitting around waiting for your infamy to go down. You just kind of look at the pop screen. Uh, so I, I was like, I was kind of curious. So I went back to the pop screen. And uh, uh, I went down to, like, where my people were. I was like, oh, is, is Shia, like, a thing 
in this mod or, or is it just all suny and then uh i looked at it for like two seconds the game crashes the game just crashes and i'm like well that's great and then i realized i forgot to save after the nepal war so i had to go back to the to the auto save i went back before and i had to do i had to invade nepal a third time but this time i learned my lesson this time i saved the game and then i went to the i got to the bottom of this so I, I went up to the pop screen and my suspicion was that if i put my mouse over any of the pops that were like the visible pops you can click on if i move my mouse down to like that lower part of the pop screen where like all the people were the game would crash and sure enough as soon as i did that the game crashed I knew not to open the pop screen for the rest of the game. And this sucks because the pop screen is the easiest way to change your national focus. So having to manually change it from, you know, not the pop screen is just not good. So then it was time to have some fun. Um, I got a little event that gave me a Cassus Belly on Japan to take one of their colonies. And I immediately went and decided to take one of their ones that bordered me. But that was a pretty simple war. You know, Japan was pretty weak. But then during the war, I noticed that there was a Great War happening. I was able to join a side of the Great War against a few people that I wanted to take land from, specifically Scandinavia, who still owned that little itty bitty island off the coast of Persia. And I had a core in that, and I needed that if I wanted to form a little funny nation that uh, gave me more pops. I go in, I go into this thinking, you know, like, oh, I'll, you know, it's it's this, this you know, CV will be very cheap, very easy to take, to take this. And, you know, the first thing I did was I pretty much went right to Scandinavia because they're the war leader. So obviously if I siege down most of the war leader, I'll be good. I'll be fine. And I, I even sent some brigades to Russia, but then I, I pulled back because uh, Bohemia and Muscovy invaded Poland entirely. So they had their armies completely united, which made it a lot things a lot more difficult. Also, by the way, Muscovy was an extreme disappointment in this game. I actually had a close encounter with them early on in the game when I was fighting the uh, Shaki Khanate because they were actually out of Muscovy, which is weird because Shaki Khanate is usually against Muscovy, but Muscovy was so weak this game that they actually were allied, which is very weird. And luckily for me, Novgorod took a little bit of the Nogai Horde beginning of the game, and normally Muscovy cleans that up, but the Muscovy, like, sucked this game. This is, like, the first time I've seen them suck in a long time, and Novgorod kept that little snippet, and, like, if they if Muscovy took that from Novgorod, I would have been really screwed in that war. But yeah, I'm kind of backtracking a little bit, Mus but Muscovy is just, was extremely disappointed in this game, and... Even late game, they were still disappointed. So Muscovy wasn't even the main target here. It was just Scandinavia. So I focused entirely on Scandinavia. And I seized down all of Scandinavia. And I'm like, okay, well, let's see what the war is like. The war score is like. And the war score is going fine. Like, I have 50 plus war score. But then I noticed that wait, we're in the minus. We're, well, we're not in the minus. But we're, we're not. Something's going on. I, I thought it was like, oh, it must have been Poland is fully sieged down. So I was like, okay, let me go and siege Poland. And then I start trying to siege Poland. Text Ravery because, you know, Bohemian and Muscovy troops. And then I noticed what the war was started over. It was actually started over Crimea declaring for uh, a core region in Muscovy. And that region was under Muscovy's control for the entire game. They didn't lose it to Crimea at all. In fact, Crimea got steamrolled. When I realized that most of the war score is taken against that, I'm like, oh shit, I gotta go down there and like clean that up right now. So I immediately go back down to Muscovy, siege all that stuff down, and then pretty much right after I sieged it down, the AI was like, oh cool, we can peace out now. And then I heard the peace out screen, I was like, yes, finally, the war's over. And then I realized that they didn't add a single thing, nothing. I didn't get any land. In fact, I wasted infamy to take colonies from Scandinavia. So I was a little bit mad. Pretty much right after the war happened, I immediately declared war on Scandinavia, gaining two infamy and losing 100 prestige just to take one little island that I should have gotten in the war. And this Great War basically kind of ruined my experience for the rest of the game, and I kind of felt, you know, pissed. The island was one war score. It was literally one war score, and we were pretty much gonna win. They couldn't even add a one war score island, which is what pisses me off so much. It's like they don't have a future foresight to realize that, you know, they could keep going. They only have that foresight at the beginning of the war. But once they're nearing the end, they just give up so quick. So after I took that little island from Scandinavia, I wanted to form my little funny nation. But then I, I said I couldn't do it, even though I had all my cores. Uh, I didn't know that, that there was a bug. Um, so I spent like an extra 10 years basically doing nothing because I was trying to figure out why I couldn't form my little country. In the meantime, I, I pretty much just did a bunch of crazy stuff. I, I went communist because I was like, well, I'm, I, while I'm waiting, I might as well do something interesting to spice up the gameplay. And uh, normally I don't go communist because y you can only do two things, uh, progress social reforms and regress political reforms. The social reforms are good, you know, you can keep progressing those, but then eventually you run out of ones to do. So I needed the pad, I just kept passing them and then eventually ran out and then I realized, oh, I can only revert political reforms, 
which I didn't want to do because all the ones I could revert would basically make my country worse. Which funny, funnily enough, in, if you choose fat, if you if I went fascist, I could have allowed for limited voting and then went back on the reform. Uh, which is it's so stupid <laughs> that the fascist one, the fascist party, could do that. Like when you're a fascist dictatorship, you can do that, but when you're a communist dictatorship, apparently, apparently you can't do that. Which is I think that's dumb. Political ideologies are obviously not represented very realistically in this game. So that's based, that's what I did. I just went communist just as, for a joke. Uh, I guess the one cool thing is that you just get to steal a bunch of money every time you like conquer land from somebody. Uh, that was the only fun thing. Uh, everything else kind of sucked. Yeah, so, so then I stopped playing. I'm like, I'm kind of bored. I'm like, well, I guess I can kind of end it here because I can't form the nation. Uh, but then I checked the GitHub and uh, there was a patch and I got the patch and the patch saved um, saved the day because then it, it fixed that bug. And then when I got from the country, then I was able to get all the cores and I did a bunch of conquering and stuff. I got uh, Iraq, was able to uh, clean up the blue, blue just sand was eaten. Um, and I was able to take a bunch of stuff from Turkey. And while I took a bunch of Turkey, um, that's when I started doing some funny stuff. And that's when I got myself into probably the uh, the worst decision I ever made. Because um, Turkey was out of Italy. Italy joined. I couldn't really add anything because I didn't have enough jingoism. The only thing I could add is a dismantlement of Italy, which would have been easy. Italy was like super easy. I already had a, I had a huge ass navy. I had military advantage, everything. So all I had to do was just go to Sicily and just defeat them. But little did I know that Italy was going to call in Japan and then Japan was going to call in all their allies. So half my country was going to be a front line to a war, which was not what I was expecting. And, but that's what happened. So I had to spend this huge ass war. I had a huge front line of Japan, a huge front line of everybody, big pain in the ass. Because I didn't have any troops up there. So this war with Japan and Italy, it was, it was, it took a little while. At first I was invading Italy, like just reg, just regular invasion of Italy, you know, standard I invade Sicily, everything's going fine. And that's when it, Italy calls in all their allies, Japan, the Nubian Confederation, the Novgorod gets called in at some point. I'm um, just, everyone gets called in and it's, it's a really, it's a huge deal. And I only have, I have a lot of troops up north, but they're all kind of unorganized and there's a lot of provinces up there. And obviously I'm suffering with all these rebels too. So all my units are still kind of in my own country. And this war was a bit of a mess at first. The front line, like I, Japan, Novgorod, they like went around my lines and they started sieging down a bunch of stuff. Luckily I was able to actually defeat these little guys and everything was fine. Uh, I stabilized the front line. I had to peace out Italy first separately and then peace out Japan, which is pretty easy. All it required was just invading Italy, which wasn't too bad. It would have been easier if it was just Italy, but then I had to deal with uh, the Nubian Confederation because they sent a bunch of units and they actually had more units than Italy. So I had to deal with all the, oh, those guys. Um, luckily, I had a pretty good attack general that I could use because they were not attacking me for some reasons. But uh, so I just attacked them because I could. And I, I su successfully won. I, I pushed into Northern Italy. Most of Italy was occupied. I could piece them out and then... I could just peace out the entire war for white peace. And that, that was the war. That was it. That's literally all I did. I wanted to have something extra besides just taking cores from Turkey. That was it. Uh, but no, it escalated to this massive conflict that wasn't even a great war, which is, that was the bummer. But yeah, after this war, it was pretty much just me kind of just waiting for the no more war to be done and then went for northern India because that's all I could do at this point. At least clean up my borders. You know, that's the that's the least I could do. The least I could do is clean up my borders. So I just went for all the little countries in northern India, which, by the way, take forever. These these states take forever to justify 15 infamy for one little itty bitty province. That's it. And it takes a year to justify. So it, it's it's not really time efficient at all. And then eventually my infamy got high enough to where people actually cared. And then France declared war on me. Ooh, I'm so scared. France declared war on me. All of France's allies kept invading that Ethiopian colony I took from Italy. And I basically just destroyed every single one of them and also destroyed all their navies. Uh, so then I white pieced out, um, out of the war and that was the last major war. Everything else was pretty much just me cleaning up, uh, Northern India. And then that was it. Overall, this campaign was actually, it was pretty fun. Just that the great war really bummed me out. And then I kind of just was like, I want, I want to be done because divergences of darkness, um, the HPM version is, is really boring. I didn't want to just end it. Cause then I feel like people would have been like, you could, you could have done more. And I could have totally done way more. I just, I just, I like when, whenever I play HPM divergences, the first thing, like once I'm like, get to that point where I'm strong, I just want it to end. Usually I'll, I would stop playing. Like I would have stopped playing probably after that great war, but because I'm recording the video, I feel obligated to keep going. 
and that's kind of what makes me not really go for the full potential i kind of just stop because i get i i just don't have the capacity um to actually want to do more so i just basically record until the time runs out which is sent which is basically what i did i don't think you guys are gonna get mad if i don't end exactly at 9 36 and then maybe like 20 years earlier but uh i don't know it's just some people might, might not like it besides m my own personal boredom at the late game the flavor they did add was really nice definitely if anyone wants to try out any of the other things they not only did a per like update for the timber tash empire they also added some kurdish stuff and kurdish flavor not not as well not as much but you can form kurdistan you can do a bunch of cool stuff with that uh but that but that's gonna be it for today um if you guys liked it, let me know. And if you guys really hated it, let me know. Because if I, if you guys, if no one liked this video, then uh, that's important to me. Because then now I know not to do this again. But I'm kind of trying to experiment to see if I can really get get into a setup that works efficiently. Yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you uh, in the next video. Hello everyone. Before I end the video, I really w I want to quickly say that uh, I'm 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 sorry for this video taking a little bit longer to upload. It was supposed to be out like two weeks ago, and then I had stuff to do, so then I delayed it by a week. Uh, then I was almost done finishing it last week, but then I was stopped by other stuff, so then I was pushed it off to this week, and now I'm finally able to finish it, but now I realize that, like, like holy shit, the release of Victoria 3 is in two days. It comes out on the 25th, 26th, 25th, some, something like that. I'm going to be buying it on the day or some at some point when it really when it's released this is probably the last victoria 2 video for a little while i'm going to try to make a video next week on victoria 3 and i'm gonna i don't know what nation i'm gonna be playing i have i have like three ideas of when i'm gonna be playing and also i'm sorry for never <laughs> that stream uh, i did a stream um i was thinking like i could do a stream and do this video at the same time and then that didn't work so then I, then I did a stream, and then I said I was going to finish the stream last Friday, and then I never finished the stream last Friday. And I didn't finish it this Friday either. So, uh, I feel bad. I feel a little bad. Uh, I'm sorry for that. But that will be done at some point, probably after October is done. The Victoria 3 video, I want to get it out, because I want to get it out before, um, I want to get it out by next week. Um, but I don't know. I don't have time to play it on the day of release. I won't have time until, like, probably four days after. Even then, I don't know if I'll be able to actually experience the game. This will be my first time playing the game. And I'm going to probably make a lot of dumb mistakes. I mean, everyone's going to, but it's. I'm probably going to be playing the game really slowly. So chances are I might not even finish it, finish the game uh, with the, all the time I have. And then I might have to wait another week before I can actually keep playing. Uh, I, I just want to say thank, thank you guys for being patient. It's been a pretty like difficult time for me to operate this channel um, for the past two months. It's it's been it's a, I know some people may, maybe don't like the change of con like the change of style I'm doing a little bit, but it's for the sake of me trying to get these videos out a little faster. And I'm still kind of failing at that, but um, it's less stressful for me to edit these than before. And I don't, if I did these before, I would have been able to get out way more than I used to. I don't know why I never bothered to do this this way, because it's so much easier to edit it this way. Um, the other way I edited it would take literally hours, and I would feel so stressed, and I would have to like take days break apart, which would end up making the videos take like literally like, like weeks, when it should have been a lot shorter. But that you learn the hard way. I, I'm learning the hard way. So yeah, thank you for watching this video. I know this is kind of a dumb video to stop doing Victoria 2 on DoD. I would, all right, plan was to do a India video um, after that one. I was going to do an Indian Nation. I was going to do like Mysore. Uh, I never got to do that because I didn't have time. Then I was sick this weekend, so that didn't help either. Yep, see you. So see you guys on the Victoria 3 start screen in like two weeks um, if everything goes to plan. Okay, uh, oh my god. <laughs>